700 years before the days of William Wallace and Braveheart, the land was divided and subject to invading hordes. Brave Highlanders rose to the challenge to defend their lands. Today at Blair Castle in Persia, these eight athletes are going to pitch their strength and skill against each other for this, the ultimate accolade, the Chieftain's Claymore. But first, they must beat the current champion, Gregor Edmonds, the Highlander, in this, the Highland Challenge. The games are a colourful representation of traditional Scottish culture, almost unchanged since the 12th century. And although it's a fun day out for the family, for the athletes, this is a serious business. This is where the games begin. With the Athol Highlanders, the country's only private army that remains. They've marched from the castle down here to the games field to salute their chieftain, the Duke. The Highland Games have their origin in training for warfare. The Gododin were a group of aristocrats who came together to hone their skills to fight off challenges of the young nation that was Scotland. Now, historically, the Highland Games saw people come from all over to compete, and today is no exception. Let's meet our Highland challengers. My name is Simon Trunner Simonson from Reykjavik, Iceland, and I'm a property developer. I'm feeling confident. Michael Zolkowitz, I'm from Springfield, Massachusetts, USA, and I'm a personal trainer. I'm looking forward to the international competition, having never thrown against most of these guys before. My name is uh, Krivo Chuprinin. I'm represented uh, in this uh, great Highland Games, uh, Ukraine. I'm professional athletes, all events, very good for me, no, 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 no problem. I'm Sebastian Venta from Poland. My name is David Barron. I'm from New York City. Professional athlete. I work in uh, law firms. I do graphic design. I travel around the world and solve crimes, help people. Kind of like the A team, but one man. My name is Scott Ryder. I'm from London uh, and I'm a PE teacher. I used to be a bobsledder. I was on the British team for about three years. My name is Garrett Johnson. I'm from the United States, the state of Florida. I'm a student and I also throw the shot put as a professional, but I heard real men do the Highland Games and so I've come to play with the big boys. My name's Gregor Edmonds. I was born in Dundee, Scotland, now living in Glasgow. Representing Scotland, I'm a student, mature student. On a good day, I should be unbeatable, but we'll see if it's a good day or not. These seven men have just one aim, and that is to beat the Chieftain's champion, the Highlander, Gregor Edmonds. In the Chieftain's name and the honour of the Gadodin, I lay down my challenge. Well, Gregor, this looks like fun, but it's going to be tough. Yeah, there's a lot of very good guys here today. I think in uh, throwing events, I should try and hold my own in that, but uh, as it comes to more strength oriented events, I think I might be struggling a little, but I'll do my best. If you're a betting man, would you be favourite here today? I'm in Scotland, I'm on my own turf, so you should be putting your money on me. <laughs> well, the first event is a classic, it's one of the oldest, it's the hammer. Now, Scottish warriors are often depicted wielding a two-handed sword, but in reality, only the strongest of men can hold such a weapon. The sword of one of our greatest heroes is here at the William Wallace Monument. It is reputed he stood six foot five tall. This is gauged by putting the pommel under his chin. What better way to train for the two-handed sword than to swing a heavy hammer around the head? Some warriors preferred the use of a heavy hammer in battle as nothing was more effective for crashing through metal helmets and armor. Well, let's get to the games field for our first event. Our commentators are Stuart Sinclair Blythe and Hamish Davidson. Thank you, Alice. You join us in what is a beautiful natural arena. Yes, a great event in the Highland calendar, led out by traditional drummers. 
That's what it's all about. And here we have the Carinx, a traditional war horn used to call the picks out to battle. And here we're hoping to have a real war today. And there's the Duke of Athol with his party enjoying the sunshine. Grant Anderson, the chief heavy events judge for the day, himself a former world champion, and there are the flags of the nations to indicate the distances in each event. He's making that look easy. Let's hear about the kit. We've got some interesting kit going on there. I wouldn't want to mess with you. What, talk to us through your boots. Uh, well, these um, spikes are designed to anchor your feet into the ground. You can see me dig them in there. Um, and this allows me to lean backwards more. Uh, which helps me to throw and then of course you need to sort of glue the hammer to your hands because if you don't the hammer can often fly off at all sorts of angles and potentially hit the crowd so we use this tacky resin to, to glue it to our hands okay so it's not quite as straightforward as it sometimes looks no it's a bit of an art hammer, hammer throwing you need to be relaxed and it's, it's, it takes a lot of years to perfect joining the hammer throw in the third round this is Garrett Johnson's last throw he's actually um, quite far behind, I believe he's last, and Gregor Edmonds is in the lead. Can you tell me a wee bit about the technique, Hamish? Well, their feet are planted and they have to swing this hammer three to four times round their head. The overall length of the implement is four feet with a malacca cane shaft. Now, Gareth Johnson is the shot putter. He's probably not done much hammer throwing before, but that's still a pretty good effort. It's well over 110 feet. Quite some athlete, quite some athlete. Here's Samunderson now. He's going to try and better 123 feet 6 inches. Can he do it? He's a big man. Can he get a big throw? That's a magnificent throw. It doesn't appear to be any better, Hamish. No, I think his uh, second round throw was the best. He's not happy with that, you can tell. Now, Mike Zolkovich. 113 feet he finishes on. Kirill, it's his longest throw, but unfortunately a no throw. Here's Sebastian Venter, going to try and better his throw. A giant of a man, 6 feet 7, 160 kilograms, that's 26 stone. Now, let's see what he can do. Now that's better. Much better. Well done, Sebastian. Jimmy Pollock measuring up there. 126 feet 4 inches. His best yet. That really moves him up the ladder, Hamish. Yeah, that should certainly improve his position. But here we have Scott Ryder on his last attempt. Three swings and a mighty roar. Oh, yes, throw, well his best throw in this competition. That's a wonderful throw. 122 yeah. feet, 10 yeah. inches. Very, very Dave Barron now, his last throw. Barron in second place at the end of the last round. Yes, a mighty heave. Uh, he's, he's taking the lead. He's ahead of Gregor. 128 feet, one inch. Now the pressure is on. Gregor is coming out for his last attempt from behind. He's been overtaken by Dave Barron. Driving in those spikes. He always wears those yellow socks. David Barron's last throw has really piled on the pressure here. He has to get a good throw. And a big wind up. And a roar. And the way it goes. Is it good enough? Wow. Good measure. Yes. He's done it. He's recut your lead from Dave Barron and to win the event with 131 feet 4 inches. Remarkable. Coming back on his last throw. 
Well, that was an awesome start, Gregor. Uh, that's the start you want, but uh, I think I can throw further. But uh, <laughs> a win's a win, and I'll not, I'll not be fussy in a field like this. Well, the great thing was you improve with every throw. Yeah, I like I like another ten throws then. <laughs> A true pro, never happy, but he is the top of the leaderboard. There's serious quality here, though, and he's going to have to fight hard to hold on to that Highlander title. So, Gregor Edmonds is leading after one event. Seven more to go, including one with this. <laughs> Welcome back. Following the hammer throwing, Gregor Edmonds takes the lead as we move into stone throwing. One of the most primitive and early forms of warfare was stone throwing and in fact probably one of the earliest forms of gym work was using this as weightlifting. On the banks of the River Tay a young man though is doing a little more than just stone skimming. Using stones found on Scotland's riverbanks it was also known for young men to engage in stone throwing as an early form of sport and to build strength. Well, Garrett, this is your strong event, uh, collegiate champion of America. I am. And uh, the shot put actually uh, is a spinoff of this. The stone toss predates it. Uh, and so it's good to get back to the roots and try the real thing. We are joining this in the third round and Garrett Johnson is in fact in the lead, as expected. There's Jimmy measuring up, checking the results. But as I said, Garrett Johnson is in the lead. Here's David Barn spinning the throw. Great big powerful throw. I'm afraid it isn't good enough. Stone rolling away there, and I'm afraid his chances are rolling away with it. Samundersen of Iceland using the traditional T glide technique. Gregor on the rotation. Turn, lift, and pat. Zolkovic, the American, low, turning fast and accelerating. Here's Kirill Shaprinin here, a formidable looking character. Can you talk us through his technique, Hamish? Well, he is an Olympic discus thrower, so he's not unfamiliar with this event either. He's using the older, more traditional T-glide, which was adopted by O'Brien. Hey! But a mighty heave and fast. He's well out. Hey! Incredible throw. Waving to the crowd. Kirill has been a real asset to this event and a real crowd pleaser. Here we have Scott Ryder showing some real power. The smallest of the athletes, but a really powerful individual. Here he goes. That was a fantastic throw for the Englishman, a fantastic throw. Showing us some of his Olympic power there. Great throwing to you in the lead. Yeah, um, it's going to be close though because Sebastian and Gower are really good putters, so it'll be interesting. Were you hoping that this was going to be a strong event for you? Oh, this is my best event, yeah, absolutely. So if I don't, if I don't do well in this one, then I might as well go home. Scott, please don't go home. You've done wonderfully today. You've been a fantastic competitor. Here's Sebastian Venter for Poland. We're expecting a great big throw here. Incredible, no spin, and look at the power the guy has. Up there with the leaders. Good, yeah? Bardzo dobrze. To jest jedna z najlepszych moich konkurencji tutaj w zawodach Highland Games. Dlatego wyszło tak jak miało wyjść. Troszeczkę mało trenowałem w tym roku pchnięcie kamieniem, no ale nie jest najgorzej. Dzięki. Thank you, sir. Whipping up the crowd for us, Garrett Johnson. Wonderful technique. Yeah. Boom! There he goes. Now that's an amazing throw. I suspect that could have taken him into the lead there. What does Jimmy say? Yes, it has indeed, as expected from our current All-American shot and discus champion. 
We were looking forward to seeing the All-American Collegiate Champion in action and he didn't disappoint. Johnson throwing a massive 60 foot to take the lead, as expected. But Venter put in a very good performance and that put him in the overall leaderboard after two events ahead of Gregor Edmonds. The games are set in the grounds of Blair Castle. There's been a building here for over 700 years. It started in 1269 with the building of a tower, which is the highest part of the castle, which was added to progressively. So by about mid-1500s, a building of this size was here, astride the north-south road, guarding the pass of Killy Cranky and the gateway to the Highlands. Whoever controlled Athol controlled the influences of this area. I've been a dukedom since 1703, and we're now on to duke number 11. In the 1840s, Queen Victoria uh, visited the area in a number of times and on these occasions the, the men of Athol, the, the, the private bodyguard of the Duke, turned out and she was so, so impressed by this that in 1845 gave royal status to the Athol Highlanders which today gives the Dukes of Athol the legal right to parade an armed force. Uh, this is the only private army in Europe and we're very proud to have them on this estate. Well, the more of a long-distance battering you could give the other army, the better when you then came to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that started with the stone throwing we've just seen, but then things moved on Whoa, to the mace. Oh, brave heart. Oh, brave, brave heart. A strong man would also favour a ball and chain in close combat. With the addition of chains and ropes, implements can be thrown great distances. Brave heart. The picks had a few surprises up their sleeve too. You made a stand and you showed us the way. Brave heart. Brave heart. In Ardoch, the picks destroyed the wooden Roman fort by throwing fiery orbs over the ramparts. Oh, brave, brave heart. I believe the Romans would have got the message if that came hurtling through the roof. Joining the mace in the third throw now. We're with the man of the moment, Sebastian Venta. He's moved into the overall lead. Can he build on it? Here we go. That looks better than his last throw. I don't think it's going to help him build that lead. Garrett Johnston, the American shot putter, throwing a very good technique. Samunderson, he holds the Icelandic records. Scott Ryder of England, again the shot putter, very good technique. Dave Barron, yes, a mighty heave. Here we have Mike Zolkovic coming up for his throw. See how the Americans visualise their throw. My goodness. Now that is a massive throw. A massive throw from Mike Z. Jimmy marking it out. They use his string as a rough guide and we'll get the exact results later but I do believe that that is him moved into the lead. Kirill Shapoon in here. Getting ready for his throw. Now he did actually slip earlier and he was a little unsteady on his feet. Oh, there you go again. A good throw. Now they wear football or rugby boots for this, giving them a grip, but remember, these events are all on grass, giving them slightly less distance than, say, if they were on concrete. Here we have our champion. Can you talk us through, Hamish, the event this time? Yes, this is a 28-pound weight. He swings it first of all to overcome the inertia, sets off with fast footwork, and it explodes so fast. It's a mighty heave. That looks like a fantastic throw. He doesn't look too happy, but I think it is a belter. Well, I would expect to see Greg, Gregor uh, break the world record later this year, so it can't be that far away. Hamish, he's taking it with that, surely. Looking yeah. a little bit tense, because this could move you right up the leaderboard. 
Yeah, well, winning does help, yeah. It, uh, I don't know which one of us has got it. The tape's got to tell us now, so... It's pretty tight, Mike. What do you reckon? Um, on the angle, I don't know if Gregor got me or not. Um, if, I, if I have the win, I mean, no matter what, this is going to move me up the leaderboard pretty well. Um, last two events I didn't place well in, so if I can keep Gregor out of first place, it's always a good thing. Well, when the results came through, unfortunately, Mike didn't manage to keep Edmonds out of first place. He clinches the Mace Throw title. You look gutted, Mike. Yeah, he got me on his last throw. That's the way to do it, you know. Um, I let it all out. I moved up on my last throw. It just wasn't enough. So, you know, we still got a, still got a long day ahead of us. So there's a lot more to go. Huge disappointment, but victory in the mace puts Edmonds back at the top of the leaderboard, but it's tight, just one ahead of Venter. Kilts, kilts, kilts. Everywhere at a Highland Games, you'll see kilts. Now, modern kilts came ready pleated, but it wasn't always that easy. With just a sheet of cloth that was folded and tucked into a garment that ended up being practical for a warrior to wear. And the colors of the tartans made you part of your clan and easily distinguishable. Even a pocket, it's as easy as that. Once the stone and hammer throwing were out of the way, then in the battle it was time to get up close and they'd use the battering ram to either ram people off their horses or just ram each other out of the way and that's what we've got coming up next. This is a combination between jousting, staff fighting, and using a battering ram. It's not always a big guy that wins. It pays to be agile. Uh, here in the first round we have Venta versus Samunderson. So who's going to win here? We've got the big man at 160 kilos. And he's gone. Well, there's a major surprise. Next it's Zolkovich versus Ciprunin. Ciprunin takes it. Baron versus Ryder. And Ryder's got them on the move. He's out. Victory for Ryder. And now, Edmonds versus Johnston. He's got the shot putter on the move out fast. Here's Ryder versus Shaprunin. Now this young man has been very powerful. I'll be interested to see how he does against this huge man. He's got him on the move. No, nope. no chance I don't think. Fighting all the way. Oh, look at him. Wonderful. A big smile and that'll be a bear hug. <laughs> Lovely sportsmanship. Scott was running around the outside of you, but you just kept on pushing. <laughs> Scott, uh, very strong athlete, but maybe I'm happy now. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe Scott, Scottish people help me now. <laughs> Sabundesen versus Edmonds now. Can you talk us through this, Hamish? Yeah, so you have to get low and use the leg power and drive, drive, drive. But there's also tactics they're using here. They're both fighting one another, determined, keep the... was a proper fight. Yeah, well, you step in the ring with Simon or Simonson, you certainly know it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I knew it was going to be hard to beat, but uh, it's what you know as well. I've done it before. He has indeed done it before. And here we see him again against Schoprunen. This is the final in Blair Castle. These two competitors are very tired. Here we go. Edmonds digging down deep. Shaprunin holding fast. Edmonds beginning to push him out. Shaprunin still turning himself, keeping himself in the circle. 
I believe that was a pull there. I don't know if the judge saw it. I suspect Edmonds is going to have to concede that one. Not looking too happy. Yes, he is going to have to concede it. It's a wonderful battle. Kirill Shaprunan, the winner. You're the winner. Yeah. That was tough. <laughs> I know, really. Scotland people, help me. <laughs> yes, Ukrainian power, Kirill Shaprunan. <laughs> can safely say that he is a nutter. Cheeky Ukrainian Kirill, a very strong win as he puts Gregor down and Simonsen taking third, which he really needed. Now Shaprunin is challenging Edwards and Venter at the top. Well, training could happen in a number of different ways. And of course, the core industry here in Scotland was agriculture. And therefore, the young men could train whilst at work, either in the grain store or when storing potatoes, with throwing up the bales or the bags up high. And that's where the throw for height came into play. The 56 pound weight would be part of rural Scotland. It would be used for weighing produce. This weight is roughly the weight of 50 large potatoes. Farm workers would compete throwing the weight over the branch of a tree. You need a strong back for this. Well, we must be mad here. At the Gododin Games, we started at 15 and now the bar is up at 16 feet. 16. This makes it an incredible task for these incredible athletes. You know, why do you think you're strong at this? You gotta get angry. You know, you just gotta picture your mother-in-law or, you know, your, your evil twin brother and just get mad and throw it as hard as you can. David Barron about to throw. Now I wonder who he is visualizing. Is it his evil twin or his mother-in-law? Now, the American competitors seem to visualise their throw before they actually make it. Whipping up the crowd. Fantastic throw. And always a showman, David Barron. He's been great this weekend. And here we have Shaprunin, showing a bit of leg there. Over it goes, no problem at all. What an athlete. He's a big, scary looking man, however. The Piper, helping Mike Z. Mike. Always going through the same routine. A wonderful throw, making it look easy. He looks delighted with that, and so he should be. Some Anderson. No, he didn't get over. These boys are finding it tricky now. At 16 feet, the big pull also fails. Gregor, after the rigours of the battering ram, and Gregor goes out at 16 feet. Just after those highlights, we're seeing the bar getting put up by Jimmy to 17 feet now. Just off the Scottish record. There's that character, Kirill Shaprunin. And now we're joining David Barron. Talk us through this, Hamish. Yes, this is a 56 pound weight that's got to be thrown upwards for height between this pole vault type stands and it's got to be used, swung with one hand only between the legs and a very fast lift extending the legs and he fails at that height. But oh, and he's showing his jiggly bits to the audience there. They seem to appreciate that. With Baron out of the running, Shaprunin must fancy his chances, but we still have Zolkovitz to contend with here. Going through the motions. Hop! Accuracy out. I thought that had hit him for a minute. 
He's fine and well. And the crowd showing their appreciation. Fantastic competitor. Here comes Kareel Shaprunan. And over. No problem at all. Now that was easy. And a big roar from the big man. Wonderful performance. Crucial for him. Victory for Ukraine. Yes. I'm win. Win. Uh -huh. Win. Yeah! <laughs> He's scary. But he is stamping his authority now. The two Americans have pushed Gregor and Venter out of the points. Gregor is still clinging on to his lead, but Eastern Europe threatens he's going to have to work really hard now. Wrestling is one of the oldest forms of combat, and the agility and guile that's needed in it is almost as important in warfare as pure brute strength. Wrestling is the most basic form of physical contact. Here at the Gadodden, there are rules, but not many. One of the main moves was to disarm someone. Harking back to days of old here, we have the freestyle wrestling, potentially very dangerous, Hamish. Yes, this is a no-fear event of the combat variety, where you face your opponent on a man-to-man -man basis. The traditional backhold technique is used, with the chin on the right shoulder of your opponent and hands clasped behind his back. Anything goes, and the first contender in his back is the loser. Indeed, anything goes. Johnson, Samunderson, Ryder and Baron go. And just like a battle, this is over very, very quickly. Great sportsmanship, though. These chaps are all friends. Four gone, four to go. Edmonds has to dig down really deep now. He's fighting against a huge man. In they go, taking the grip. And all over too quickly. Again, great sportsmanship. And as you heard, he picked him up and he couldn't do anything about it. Venta and Shaprunin going through to the final round. <laughs> OK, so far things going great? Uh, all time great. Because Scotland great, competition, athletes great. And, and my uh, Sebastian, Sebastianchuk. <laughs> great. <laughs> Sebastian Venta and Kapil Shuprunin in the best of three final here. Showing great sportsmanship and using a bit of piper power. Ready for the grip. And off these strong men go. Fantastic win. Kapil Shuprunin toppling the pole. The pole being the bigger man. A surprising win, some might say. And here we go into the second of the three final bouts. These competitors must be tired. Taking the grip. And what a grip these guys must have. Off we go. And Venta taking him down with sheer brute strength. Incredible. Again, shaking hands, great sportsmanship. Now this is it. Whoever goes down here, is a loser. That's been the decider. Taking a grip. Some tactics perhaps here. Either that or having an embrace. Bit of clowning going on. 
And now we're going to get to the serious business. No. <laughs> that looked like a headbutt to me, not a, a kiss. Now this is serious business, though. So he could be psyching him out. Let's see. Yeah, they're taking the grip. Now we're down to business. Drummer kicks off. And fantastic! Brilliant for the crowd. What an athlete. These Eastern Europeans chasing our champion, Gregor Edmonds. He's a big guy. Venter strongman strength, really a great advantage there. And Shaprinin would have liked to have taken that one. Zolkovitz took third. Shaprinin still holding on to second, but Venter is just one point behind. Well, we've got to go to a break, but coming up, my favourite event. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, here's what's happened so far. We've had marching bands, dancing, cannons, carrots calling, a challenge and superb heavy strength events. The tossing of the cabra is undoubtedly the most iconic of the Highland Games. If anybody thinks of Highland Games, I think this is very much what springs to mind. They're trees that are thrown end over end, and historically it's from when the guys in times of peace were throwing up roof trusses, or some people think it's where they were throwing tree trunks over a ravine to make a bridge. Well, I wonder what Greg is up to. No bother. Aye, well, no bother for him. But this is a massive caber, and this is vital for Sebastian Venter. Here he goes, going down for the grip. An incredibly difficult thing to do. A few hints and tips there. Up it goes, making it look easy. And that is a brilliant throw, a brilliant throw for Venta. He looks very pleased with that. And so he should be. Well, here we have a massive caber. It's 19 foot 6. And these guys are not getting it over in the first round. That's 90 degrees. It's judged on an angle of elevation. But it is a heavy, heavy caver. Scott Ryder. No, uh, 75 degrees perhaps. These guys are not getting it over in the first round. Here we have Kirill Shaprunin. A huge athlete. Now these guys have been working away all day, they're absolutely exhausted. How are their arms feeling? How does this thing feel to lift? Tell me Hamish. Well there's a technique of course, you've got to balance this mighty stick. And he's got the technique, you bend down low and you have to build up uh, speed and momentum and quickly whip it up. End over end, yes. He makes it look that's, so that's a easy. successful toss, it's judged from behind on an imaginary clock face, 12 o'clock being the perfect throw and minutes past and two as, it, as three minutes past or three minutes two would be equal and so on. Now a perfect throw is at 12 o'clock and the first throw is the one that counts, is that not right? No, no, they have the best of three tosses and Gregor, well we expect to see him do well in the caber. He has tossed the mighty Bremar caber. Talk us through Gregor's throw, Hamish. Well, he's picked it up, he's making it look easy. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it is easy. This is the best 
one of the best caber tossers in the yeah, world we're looking at. Well done. Run, build up the speed, holds it high and whips the light then. Yeah. It's yeah. over. 12 o'clock. There's not, no, no, it's not 12 o'clock. It's uh, quite a few minutes yeah, off the 12 o'clock line. He must be pleased with that. He needs it. Simunderson of Iceland is certainly improving. That might move him up a bit. Zolkovic determined. That might be heave a look. Yes, it's a, it, he's finally got one over. That should move him up the league a bit. Venta desperately needs to better his last throw here to overtake Shaprunin. There's a big shout from the crowd for him. Really concentrating. And he doesn't, he doesn't do it. I'm afraid he lost the balance on that one as he was going in for the throw. That makes it impossible to retrieve it. Tired looking man. Okay, Edmonds, the same goes. He has to better his last throw to beat Shaprunin. Can he do it? Great technique. Real concentration. Can our champion make this throw? A hard run. And it's over. It is over. Now, is that good enough? They're going to measure up. It isn't. What a shame. Well, that will have hurt Gregor getting beat there, but Shuprinin with that superb toss, taking the event from Gregor and Venter, a crucial one for him. And that win takes him into first place now, and Gregor's going to have to pull out all the stops in the last event. Venter is still in with a chance to. Well, today's good Odin celebrate the ancient Pictish stone with the strongman event that tests strength, but also endurance and stamina, because this is an event where they have to carry this till the last man is standing. The Picts were a stone culture. They fought with them, lifted and revered them. These stones are the records and memories of Pictish culture and recorded their battles and identity. In Scotland, there's a long tradition of testing stones, whereby lifting one would entitle a warrior to enter the elite Pictish army. The original 2,000-year-old testing stone still lies in Glen Lyon. The Pictish icon was a stone of Schoon, otherwise known as the Stone of Destiny. Only kings were allowed to sit on it or handle it, but hey, I lifted it. Here at Aberlemno, carved in stone, we see the story of one of the greatest battles in Scottish history. If the Picts had not won at the Battle of Denetian more than 1,200 years ago, there would be no Scotland as a nation. In the first run, Ryder put in an amazing performance. This took guts and might have a big impact on the final results. What an athlete, what a competitor. Okay, this is it. Everything to play for. They're coming out now, three of them are very, very close. And as we come to the end, can you tell us what these competitors are physically about to put themselves through. What is it that they are actually about to do, Hamish? Well, these are massive granite stones which have been carved specially for the event. Uh, they weigh 400 pounds each and have to be grappled and lifted from a tree stump, the starting point, and carried as far as possible. By the time they start walking with these weights, it's going to crush their lungs. Bear in mind, this is a heavy, heavy weight. So it's going to the strongest, grittiest, most determined competitor. There's Gregor placing the stone for the optimum handhold with a bit of uh, chalk resin. Thank you, Hamish. Right, when all's said and done, there is everything to play for here. We're just getting ready. The referee cues him off. Right, up go all the stones, that's him up. Gregor's making good progress. 
Fantastic progress, in fact. Oh my goodness, Carrillo has gone down. Now, with riders earlier distance, Venta must now finish two places ahead of Edmonds to take the title. Edmonds must keep going. He must keep going. He's dropped it. And Venta takes the win. Sebastian Venta from Poland is the Highland Challenger winner. Let's take a quick look at Kirill Shiprunin. I do believe he's okay. He's walking, talking. The big man's fine. Fantastic sportsmanship again. These guys have been great. Venter pile drives through to take the win, and that fall costs Chaprin in dear, with Gregor pushed out of the points by Ryder. Khalil, really bad luck in that last event. Yes. Uh, maybe I'm very want uh, winner this event. And, and you see? <laughs> Are you okay? Because let's have a look at your injuries. Yeah, it's not no problem. I am, yeah? I am no problem, no problem. Just a, a little bit of blood from <laughs> your chin? A little bit, yes. Okay. It's no problem. Thank you. Well, great competition, great competitor. For you, you know, how did you feel the event went? Uh, it was good fun. It really was good fun. Um, I, I would like to have uh, lasted a bit longer in the wrestling, but I think, uh, yeah, it was good. The worthy winner. Well, can you believe it? Venter's half point advantage gives him the overall victory with Gregor just behind and Shaprinin taking third. Let's hear from our champion. Bardzo dziękuję. Aczkolwiek walka była do końca i wygrałem pewnie małoma, małoma punktami, jak nie pół czy półtora. Ale z czego jestem bardzo zadowolony z tych zawodów. Jest to pierwszy start w tym roku. Tutaj zawoda Highland Games i w ogóle. Jestem bardzo zadowolony, że zacząłem sezon od pierwszego miejsca. It's absolutely super. Well, big disappointment for the reigning champion, Gregor Edmonds. He's had to hand over the sword to this man, Sebastian Venter. He has won a truly amazing result. And now he receives the honour of being the Chieftain's champion. <laughs> the smiling pole. And he receives the sword and the title of The Highlander, the sword being presented by Barry Cuthbertson of the event sponsors Robert Wiseman Dairies and the champion sash, if she can just reach to get it on, by Sarah Trawson of Blair Castle. A great result and a worthy champion. Sebastian Venter from Poland is The Highlander. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. This is my first experience of Highland Games and strongman competition, and it really has been a great one. I've been surprised by the agility and the athleticism of these guys. They're certainly at the top end of sport. This has been elite sport at its best. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you soon.